So I just want to say a little bit about normal stress, shear stress and, and gravity. Right at the heart of a lot of geomorphology is that relationship between stress, which is an applied force, strength, which is a resistance to a force, and strain, which is any movement that occurs as a result of that balance between the applied force and the resisting strength. Now one of the main sources of stress or force in geomorphology is gravity. It's one of the primary driving forces in lots of geomorphic processes. It's what makes things land, it's what makes, it's what makes things settle, and it's what makes things move downhill. And lots of geomorphology is about things moving downhill. So I've got two bits of wood here. We have a surface and we have an object. If I put the object on the surface, gravity is pulling, pushing, pulling in that direction. And so the entire force of gravity is going at 90 degrees, what we call normal, to that surface. So there's no force from gravity pushing sideways, what we call a shear stress, and all the force is normal, pulling everything down uh, onto the surface. Now if I tilt, well, if I increase the gradient, if I tilt the bottom surface, there comes a point where a bit of wood on top starts sliding downhill. The primary control on that is how much of the force of gravity is not going on as a normal stress, but is going through as a shear stress, in other words a stress parallel to that surface. When the surface is flat, all the stress is normal. When the surface is at a gradient, gravity is coming in down through that direction, that angle, some of that force of gravity can be resolved as a normal force still pushing that block onto the surface. But some of that force of gravity, because of the gradient, is resolved as a force down the slope, a shear stress, pushing or applying a stress to the object moving it down the slope. The steeper the gradient, the more of the force is a shear stress and less of the force is a normal stress. If it was a vertical cliff, then none of the force of gravity would be pushing that onto, onto there nothing is holding it there, all of the force of gravity is letting it fall or pulling it down as a shear stress down the side of that slope. So when the slope is flat, the stress is entirely normal, there's no shear stress. When the slope is vertical, there's no normal stress and all the stress is shear stress. So on gradually increasing gradients or of slopes of, on steeper and steeper slopes, there comes a point where things start moving. What determines that point? Well, it's determined partly, partly by the gradient, but partly then by the resistance on that surface. If this is a sticky surface, if we have two rough surfaces, you'll need quite a lot of force being applied to overcome that friction, that resistance, that strength before motion happens. If we have a really slippery surface or a well lubricated surface or a smooth surface, then you don't need so much gradient before motion happens. So we have an applied force, normal or shear stress, we have a resistance, a strength, and then as we change the shear stress, we reach a threshold, a critical point, where movement begins. So on a horizontal surface, gravity presents a normal stress. On a sloping surface, part of the force of gravity is resolved as a normal stress at right angles to the surface, and part of the force of gravity is resolved as a shear stress, a force parallel to that surface. The steeper the slope, the more of the stress is a shear stress. On a horizontal slope, all of the stress is normal and that there isn't any shear stress. And that's why as we increase the gradient, we reach a point where things start moving down the slope. Whether or not they move depends on the characteristics of that boundary, that interface between the material and the slope on the knee bit. And the force has to overcome that resistance in order to generate motion. So we have stress, the applied force fighting against 
resistance or strength. If the stress is greater than the strength, greater than the res resistance, then there'll be strain or movement. If the strength is greater than the stress, then there won't be any movement, you won't have any, you won't have any strain.